everybody and welcome to another third party product review. Thanks to the guys over at Kapow Toys and Bad Cube. Today I'm taking a look at Bad Cube's latest offering in their Masterpiece Scale line. The Old Timer series OTS 05 Claymore, 06 Hypno and 07 Kickbutt. Their interpretations of Masterpiece Insecticons. I must state that these are only test shots, but these are test shots based on their value pack, which is all three figures in one box. You get the three figures, two alternative faces, the weapons, and these gorgeous pink Energon cubes. Mmm, Energon, hey, Electron, Electron. First up on my reviewing slab is Claymore, AKA Shrapnel, the leader of the group. Uh, personally, my favorite. He is absolutely gorgeous. He looks like he's ripped directly from the G1 animation. Uh, this is what I really love about Bad Cube. Um, their aesthetics follow the exact same sort of pattern as what Takara have. Uh, with the G1 animation and that scale chart, they all seem to fit in really, really nicely. And I think out of all of the third parties releasing these Insecticons, these are probably the most anime accurate. Take it wrong, uh, I'm looking forward to seeing what the other companies do, and I probably will get all of the Insecticons, because, let's face it, everybody needs a swarm. But these, ah, there's just something about them, they just, they just really grabbed me from the first time I saw them. I will address the yellow to begin with. Uh, the yellow is slightly off, I've been informed from Bad Cube that the finalised yellow will be slightly warmer and even more accurate to the cartoon. So there we go. Without further ado, let's take a closer look. That is fantastic, isn't it? Really, really amazingly good head sculpt. I love the use of the silver on here as well. I mean, they said about the yellow, but I actually think it's a really good yellow they've used. I love this uh, metallic blue on the chest as well. These are only test shots, but to be honest with you, the plastic quality on these feels fantastic. It's easily, in my opinion, as good as the likes of Fantoys. Yeah, I'm really, really impressed. It's definitely by far the best quality plastic that they've uh, produced, even better so than their Warpath. Really, really, really good. I do prefer the alternative head, uh, the face with that smirk. I think I prefer that. It's uh, really, really easy to swap out. It's just pegged in the back there. So what we need to do, we just need to tilt back the head, like so, and just uh, pop this one off, like so. Nice and nice and easy. Ooh, scary. And pop this one back on, like so. Let's push that in. Yeah, <laughs> that is a smirk and a half. I do like the purple, the purple accents on this. Uh, it's almost like a metallic shine to that purple, and that's, that's, again, really, really nice. I think it's cast in a purple plastic and then painted by the looks of things, uh, which is really, really nice. It's a good gun, again, fairly, fairly G1 accurate. Uh, I don't recall them having a gun with them most of the time. Generally, Trapnel obviously used to use his electricity. Um, that was kind of his thing. Good use of silver, nice paint applications. Again, this is only a test shot. Very, very nice figure. Very nice detailing, like the gray piping along the side here. Great proportions. All in all, rather delicious. Let's cover the articulation. His uh, claw prong thingy movies, they go up and down, they are on a ball, so you can swivel them however you wish. You can have them off. You can even take them off, just pop them off the joint there, it's entirely up to yourselves. Uh, I think they look really, really good. Just nice and high behind his head like so. The head, as we saw earlier on, has got a great range of movement looking up. I mean, the Decepticons are the, some of the smallest of the Decepticons, uh, so he probably should have a really good range of motion to look up. Down, not so much, not a great range there. Uh, left and right is tight, but no problem whatsoever. The arms are on ball joints. I know a few people have suggested that maybe they should be on uh, swivels. 
because it's a masterpiece line. Maybe they should, they could be correct, but these are insects, so we need a really great range. Uh, I think maybe ball joints was probably the easiest and most productive uh, option to take, so I can't knock them for that. You do have a double bend at the elbow. So again, we've got great range there. We have an upper bicep swivel. We have a rotation on the fist. And we have an open and close on the hand, which allows us to just slide the gun in and out. There's no rocking motion on the fists, just the section that allows us to transform them down. The waist joint on this is a ball. It is a tad loose, but again, this will be corrected for the final product. It does give us an incredible range of motion. Legs are on a soft ratchet. They can do super high kicks and a super back kick. We can do full Van Damme splits. We've got a nice deep 90 degree bend at the knee. No knee rotation there, but we do have the thigh swivel just inside there. And the feet go forward and back. And of course, we have ridiculous amounts of ankle pivotry. Well, to store Claymore's gun on his back, first thing you wanna do is just fold the handle up on his gun. We're then gonna come round to the back section and the gun is going to sit in. Basically, there's these two tabs there and the two tabs on the back. We're just going to plug that into the underside of his back, like so. Now, to transform him, we're then going to come around to these arms. We're going to lift this section down, spin the fist around, slide that section back in, and just pull the gun down, like so. Going to move these silver covers over the face, which hides it up. And this is one of the my favorite parts of this entire set. Watch this. If I just pop this section down, you better see what I'm doing here. If you extend the lower body, that is an automatic recall on the chest. That is fantastic. It just pushes those, those chest sections out. So pulling that down slims up the chest. That is great. Right, the next step, you wanna rotate the waist around like so. Come down to the legs and you've got these panels just on the inside here. Flip those open, like so. They're tabbed in just here and here. You then open up the leg tab, like this. You wanna compress the foot down, like that. You then got this double jointed knee section here. Now bring this section up as you bring this section down. So rotating that like so, using the double jointed knee, and just peg that in like this. You should now be left with something that looks like this. You then want to fold these tabs back in again on both sides and then rotate this section into the middle. Rotate this section into the middle. And you see there's a tab here and a tab there. They're both going to tab in together like so, securing that into place. Now slide this black tab section down like this. That now reveals a tab in the leg where we can bring down the fist and just plug that into the leg section like this. Come to the underside, flip the hands, kind of insect leg things down like so. Uh, that's pretty much the bug mode. Uh, that does require us to move the gun again though. Uh, I think there's a tab if we look just under here, there and there. Basically, if we just turn the handle around, slide that handle in there, and then there's these two tabs here, they just slide into the black notches on the black there. And there we go. There we have him in his insect mode. Now, I really like that. It's uh, very, very compact. It's nice and secure. Everything's tabbed in firmly. It feels very robust. Uh, it's very G1 toy-like. Actually, I mean, the in all honesty, the cartoon, they never actually looked like insects. I heard that. Apparently, they landed in the swamp, and they obviously scanned what was local to them. But I really like it. It's a good alt mode. Things tab in firmly. Things are hidden, and I love that sliding section that we got with the chest. 
which puffed out the lats on him. It's good. Really, really nice alt mode. Next up, we have Kickback, aka Kick Butt. Uh, again, very, very good G1 sculpt. The yellow will differ slightly in the final product, but he's a good, solid figure. He looks fantastic. Absolutely love it. Again, they've used this nice, rich, deep purple. I love like the turbine sections here on the legs. Everything is tucked away. There's no gaps in him at all. He feels very well put together. And I do love the silver paint applications. Really, really good. He's got a really nice gun. Very, very nice. Just open this up. And obviously, like shrapnel, he does have gun storage. Basically, all that we need to do, we just need to fold the gun upwards like so. Uh, these sections come apart like this and like this. And then we can just fold the gun in half. And then we can just bring in this section here. And that's just going to tab in this hole on the back like so. And that just keeps the gun out of the way so you don't lose it. Articulation wise, the head moves up and down. I think it's actually on a swivel pivot sort of thing as opposed to a ball joint. Full rotation there. We do have his feelers. They do also move. They're just on a swivel. Great range up. Fairly good range down. The shoulders again are on ball joints with a nice deep cut to allow for a nice upper swivel there. Upper bicep swivel is on an independent joint. And again, we have those double jointed elbows. We have the rotation at the wrists and the open and close motion. The waist, again, is on a fairly loose ball joint, but that is going to be rectified. It does give us a huge range of motion though, and almost a diaphragm rock as well. Lovely soft ratchets. Great range of motion there. Swivel within the thigh. Nice bend at the knee. And great ankle pivots. Up and down motion. Now we do get this smirking face with him as well. Although with my test shot I am having difficulty swapping it over. Because with this one we've got a tab at the top and at the back, and there doesn't seem to be quite enough clearance just on the inside of the chin section here. I can't quite pull it out and down. Uh, as it stands, I do prefer the face that's already on here, but uh, I'm sure that's something they will fix in the final version. Right, to transform kick butt, your first steps, you need to rotate his arms, so the hands are facing the opposite direction. Pull these silver sections forward, and when you pull them forward, you wanna make sure that you line up this gap here and this gap here like so because that's now going to allow us to slide this whole back section out of there you're going to want to remove the gun if you've used it for storage and you want to flip up this back section like so and then come around to the front and flip the front section forward as well so it's kind of like in this sort of position just on this underneath section there's a small plate that was hidden in the chest we flip that up that can go up and that covers the face. Come round to these arms and you want to flip those upwards and then just bend at that double jointed elbow and bend it downwards. This is where it gets fun. <laughs> you want to rotate this section here down. You've then got these sections in here. They are going to lift up. So we need to pull this one up first like this and this one's going to go up as well. They lift all the way up and then they're going to pull out to the side. They're on a rotation just there so that rotates down and around. That one again rotates down and around so they're now at the side there. Bring these sections back in and they're now going to tab together so bring that back into the center and tab the two fists 
together, he says, there, there we go, that's those tabbed in. You want to just come on the underside here, rotate this section around, and they're now gonna split. So we split those out and just rotate them around. They're gonna form the feet. You can then bring this top section, just bring this section back over like so. Rotate the head all the way around like so. And then this back section here is gonna fold inwards on that hinge like this and can be slid all the way in and tucked in there firmly. So make sure both those black tabs line up and they tab into the bottom of the crotch section like so. And then just make sure that this panel here is lined up with the ball jointed hinge and you wanna just make sure that's secured and pressed in there firmly. Now bend this joint down and move the legs outwards. Unplug these ball pegs and that's gonna line up and slide into the side. You can now bring this section back up and tuck these little insect legs in like this. Come around to the feet and collapse them down. Slide that one up, lay that into position. Come around to this side, flip up the purple restraining tab. You can now flip this section forward and out like so. Come around to the end here and there's another little section we need to just flip out. Just on the end here, just flip that out. You're gonna need nails for this. Once these are out, we can then put the retaining clips, face those back downwards. The gun tabs just into the end of the tail here, holding that into place. And your last little thing to do is, as you see the leg is wobbly here, there's a sliding clip just inside there and a couple of notches. If you watch the gray uh, clip, it's just gonna slide and that's now gone over that notch and that locks that into place. And here he is, fully transformed. Uh, to be honest, he's probably my least favorite of the three in his insect mode. Uh, I, I don't know, it's maybe just like, just like the cricket thing. I'm not a huge fan of that, but he still does look good. They've got that very, very insect uh, look to it. You've got a movement on these legs so they still can move round. You've got the head, you've got the antennae there, they can still dribble down, you can <laughs> manage on. Uh, you've got the legs, they move fully, so you can just position this however you do see fit. I would have liked the option for like a flight stand or something, maybe a peg or something, maybe we can use a peg or something that grips on here. So I'd like to have this guy flying in like a swarm of locusts. Uh, like these really shocking purple sections at the back there, really, really nice, very soft spikes, but effective nonetheless. It's just a good, clean insect mode, just unfortunately not my favorite. Now last, but by no means least, is Hypno, AKA Bombshell, with his mind control shells. Uh, he's like a beetle, and he looks just as gorgeous as the other two. Fantastic G1 likeness there on the face. The only thing personally I would have differed slightly in his appearance in bot mode is maybe give him some uh, kind of knee pads, something like he had kind of raised triangular knee pads in the uh, cartoon. But other than that, he does look very, very good. Um, articulation on him is probably better than the other two, just for the sheer fact that he's got those nice ratchet shoulders. I mean, we can get away with it with this guy because he's got very broad shoulders anyway, so it just adds a little bit more depth to those. The arms do rotate fully, and we do get part of the transformation, but we do get kind of a butterfly hinge there as well. Rotation at the upper bicep, double jointed elbows, rotation at the fist, and the open and closed fingers. Rotation at the waist, a little bit of forward and backwards motion due to the ball joint. Soft ratchets, soft ratchets, nice bend. A little bit less on this guy than on the others. Foot, really, really nice pivot, forward and backwards. For weapon storage, you wanna bring this section up, this section up, bring this section up like so. And this is gonna go around to his back and if you just look on there, there's a tab there, a tab there, that tabs in. 
just like that and stores out of the way. To get them transformed, the first thing we're going to do, you want to extend the insect legs. They pull out of the top of his shoulders, hence the reason we didn't have the ball joints. Then come round to the forearm, that's going to pull outwards, and as you pull that out, it rotates the fist like so. Move the top of his gun backwards like so, and just pull this chest section forwards. And the head is now going to go into the chest. And as you push that up, it unplugs the back section, like so. And then we can tab that back in. Lift this section up, like so. And then rotate it all the way around, so it's like that. If you've got the gun stored on the back there, just detach it. Slide this section all the way down. With this back section hanging here, these sections here come downwards, like so. And that one goes down like that. You can then bring this section back up, and that's going to slide in like this. Hop this insect hand out. That just untabs from there like so and extend the leg. Same on this side, pop the insect leg out, that pulls down and extend the legs. Rotate the leg so it is facing outward like so. And with the front of the leg you want to just untab and that's going to come around here and there's a tab here that's going to plug into that tab there like so. And then with this foot, rotate it down and it's on a swinging hinge. You want to swing that round and as you swing it round it's going to tab in to the side section like that. Swing this uh, purple section out on both sides. Do this one as well. And this next bit really impresses me. Uh, the legs kind of lock into place but there's a spring loaded mechanism on here so as you push that down it allows you to go beyond where it's locked in. Look at that, you can feel how it's really, really sprung. And then that's going to tab into the base under there. And you're going to do the same with this side, and then they're going to tab in together. If you come to the underside, there's this tab that just sits here on the foot. You want to move that one inwards. It's on a swivel pin. Just bend that one in, like so. That's going to sit the side of this body here. Now the next step, we've got a tab here and a tab here and also a tab underneath. We're going to tab this into there, this one into there, and this one is going to go into this section we just done here. So rotate that up. I find the easiest one to do, if you locate this one on the underside first, that's the one that's going to secure everything into place. So if I just locate that, it's now tabbed in, and then tab that in, and then that one in like so comes to the top side, flip this purple section out, and there's a tab here and a notch here. And this section here is going to plug into there, so we bring that down, plug that in there, and then slide that one into there like so. That secures all that into place. And then you want to push these top sections over to just lock down the top. like that. And then last but not least you can then grab the weapon with the hook facing upwards. That's going to slide in there and secure into place. And there we go. That is his beetle mode. Uh, my favourite by far. I absolutely love how everything tabs in. Everything is extremely secure. And I just love the overall look at it. I mean they look like big beady eyes. You've got the rotation on the head there. You've got the ability to move this front section that goes up and down on a separate axis. The legs move up, down. You've got these little feet underneath. You've got the supporting feet here. You've got movement on the back legs as well. Oh, it's just a really, really great interpretation of Bombshell. Absolutely love it. I would love to just army build this guy. The bug mode is sublime. Here they are all together in their insect modes and they look fantastic. I love them. Uh, very, very impressed. Uh, 
Bad Cube seem to be getting better and better and better with their releases. This is by far the best figures they have done to date. Love the fact they include like the Energon cubes, which basically almost glow. Really, really nice. Really, really good set. Let's bring in some other figures for a size comparison. Vehicle-wise, they're big bugs, but again, they were about that sort of size in the program. Oh, I absolutely love these. These are fantastic little toys. They really, really are. Bad Cube have honestly outdone themselves. They're the first in the Insecticon race to get us a masterpiece team out there. Um, I think they're due to be released as a full set in July, which is incredible. I mean, they've literally gone from prototype to an amazing finished product in next to no time at all. Let's just bring in some more Decepticons to give us a size comparison in bot mode. I personally think they work incredibly well. I hope to really, really build on my masterpiece Decepticon army. Thanks for watching, guys. If you want to purchase these, make sure you click on the link in the description below, which takes you through to the Kapow Toys pre-order page. And until next time, for myself and the Bad Cubes Evil Bug Core, goodbye.